So what I have here today is a new anvil. It's actually a piece of scrap steel that one of my uh, awesome uncles found and gave to me. So uh, it weighs about 85 pounds. I'm going to try this out as a new anvil. Um, I don't think it's any sort of hardened steel or anything like that, but it's definitely going to work out better than that rail railroad plate that I got. Uh, but it's got a little bit of rebound to it. Not bad at all. So my first project I think I'm going to do with it uh, right now is making up a squirrel cooker for a friend of mine. Uh, so let's get going and we'll see how it works. Just for a quick comparison, here's my good old granite anvil. And this thing is actually surprisingly hard. It actually works good enough as an anvil. And here's my old uh, railroad plate. This is what I used to make my Viking sword. It's nice and flat, but it's not hard at all. Nothing. This new anvil ought to work a whole lot better. Okay, so that was the first strikes on the new anvil. I'm working on making the uh, steak for the squirrel cooker. This is going to be the uh, the fork, so I'm flattening this out before I split it. Okay, so that's my uh, marker. I'm going to split this thing down. This is the end, opposite of the steak end, and so this is going to be the uh, pig's tail.
Okay, so one of the latest additions to the forge is this uh, buffing grinding wheel where it's got the uh, the wire wheel and the buffer on there. And so I'm gonna use that wire wheel right now just to kinda uh, take off the fire scale before I sharpen off the spikes on the, uh, on the squirrel cooker. So in the spirit of trying out new tools, I've got a coarse Norton stone and I'm gonna throw this on here and see how that works. This is gonna be my first time trying this out. So we'll see what happens. Okay, well that's definitely a different experience than uh, using the files. I'm not sure if I like that better or not. I think I'm actually going to try and, and use some of those files just to kind of touch it up a little bit. But uh, that should be about good to go. So the grinder isn't going to get the inside of these times. At least it's tougher, so. Just use my good old mill bastard to touch it up a bit. There's a little bit of a burr on the spike there, so I took that off. Yeah, those are good and sharp now. And then as a finishing touch, I'm just gonna kinda smooth this up with some wet dry sandpaper. Okay, so here's what the finished squirrel cooker looks like. I had to take a little bit of extra time just to make sure that the, uh, the fork would fit on there properly because you gotta be able to, to roll this over um, as you're cooking your as you're cooking your meat but uh, yeah I like this still like this design so your fire would be uh, here or maybe out here even wherever wherever it's got to go you can you can adjust it and the the indents on the rebar kind of help lock it into place you got your squirrel cooking over there you can rotate it rotate it away from the fire and then if you have a cook pot something like that you can uh, you can switch that around like this. There, and then if you have a cook pot or something like that, suspend your uh, cook pot over the fire. So I made this for my friend Aaron, uh, who helped me out on the shoot for Sons of Rome and Sons of Vikings. He was one of the uh, actors. He was one of the uh, Norman warriors. So you can see him in that when that uh, gets released on YouTube. He also helped out a lot as a camera operator. He was there for about, I think, two days um, as, a, as a camera operator. So he uh, was a real big help. I couldn't have done it without him. So as a thank you, I uh, made this for him. And uh, hopefully you cook a lot of uh, game on it, Aaron. But uh, to everybody else, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be more Viking.